everybody. Welcome to our section 8.5 lecture video where we're going to be converting between metric and U.S. Uh, measurements and we're also going to be converting temperature measurements. So first off, converting from metric to U.S. or U.S. to metric, I have a nice table with lots of information and yet again you do not need to memorize this, uh, you just need to know how to use it. So this entire table will be on your conversion sheet which you'll be able to use when you're taking your final exam. Okay, uh, the important thing is knowing how to use it. So let's get started. Uh, my first example says standard size compact discs, that's CDs, are 12 centimeters in diameter. Convert this length to inches. Round the results to the nearest nth. Tenth. So what we're trying to do is go from 12 centimeters to inches. That's really the problem we have, is 12 centimeters equals how many inches? So then I look at my chart and I try to find something that goes from centimeters to inches, okay? So let's see, right here I notice that one centimeter is about 0.39 inches. So that works, that has centimeters and inches in it, okay? Uh, now one thing that I will mention to you guys um, is that uh, you'll actually notice there is this one right here and another one right there. Uh, because these are approximate, uh, the decimal places actually go further out than two decimal places, um, these will actually get you slightly different answers. And while I wish my lab math would accept both of them, um, it's going to accept this one because you're going from metric to US. And I believe that's the one that they're actually going to want you to use. So just pay attention to, are you going from metric to US or US to metric? Okay, and use that half of the uh, table when you're doing your work, okay? So we are going from metric to US, so we're gonna use this one. One centimeter is about 0.39 inches. I'm gonna set up a, um, a conversion ratio, very similar to how we did US measurements um, in section 8.1. Um, and we're going to do it very similar to that again. So I notice that one centimeter is about 0.39 inches. I'm going to put one centimeter on the bottom, 0.39 inches on top. I want my centimeters to cancel out, so that's why I put centimeters on the bottom. I want to end in inches, so that's why inches are on top. So I'm doing 12 times 0.39. Okay, and let's see, we're going to get about... Uh, 4.68, but it says to round the result to the nearest tenth. So if I round that 6, uh, the 8 will make it round up. So this rounds to about 4.7 inches. Alright. Next up, convert 12 liters to gallons. Round to the nearest tenth again. So we're doing 12 liters equals how many gallons? So again, we're going from metric to US. So I'm looking over on this side for liters to gallons, and I notice it right here, okay? One liter is about 0.26 gallons. So I'm going to set up my conversion ratio again. So 12 liters, because I start on liters, liters should go on the bottom of my conversion ratio. Gallons is what I want to end with, so that should be on top. And one liter is about 0.26 gallons, so one goes with liters, 0.26 goes with gallons. When you multiply this 12 times 0.26, uh, you're going to get about 3.12, but it says to round to the nearest tenth. So the tenth place is right here where the one is. The two is less five, so it's going to round down. So this is approximately 3.1 gallons. Alright, this is just kind of for fun. Um, and you can do this at home. <laughs> so I'm going to do my height, but for fun, do your height, okay? What is your height in feet and inches, okay? So I'm actually pretty short. You guys don't get to see me in person because we're doing an online class, but I'm pretty short. I'm about five foot two. Okay, you can put your own height there because this is more fun that way. 
we're going to convert your height uh, to meters. So the first thing I'm going to do is get it all to be one unit instead of two. So five feet is actually 60 inches. I could do five times 12 to get there. And then that 60 inches plus two more inches, I'm 62 inches tall. So I'm going from 62 inches to uh, meters. So the thing is that I'm not going to be able to go from inches to meters. Uh, what I'm going to be able to do is I can go from inches to centimeters. That's all I've got up here. So what I'm going to do is do that first. So 62 inches. And let's see, inches to centimeters, one inch equals about 2.54 centimeters, which gives me a height of 157.48 centimeters. And then if I want to go from centimeters to meters, I know that King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. I'm going from centimeters to meters, which is the base unit. So all I'm going to do is take my decimal and move it to the left two places. So I'm about 1.5748, that's pretty long, uh, meters. So I'm about 1.6 meters tall. Okay. So you can try that with your own height now that you've seen me do mine with, seen me do my height. So if you need to pause the video, go for it. See how tall you are in meters. All right, next up, another fun one. And again, you can do this on your own. It's more fun to do something personal. So that's why I put something a little more personal on. Uh, what is your weight in pounds? And again, you guys don't know me, but I'm kind of tiny. Um, I'm about 115. Okay, so I'm about 115 pounds. You can put your own weight in there um, and go from there because that's kind of fun. And we're going to convert our weight in pounds to kilograms. So I'm going from 115 pounds to how many kilograms? So notice up top is one pound is about 0.45 kilograms. So I'm going to use that. So I'm going to start with 115 pounds. And I know that one pound is about 0.45 kilograms. So I'm taking my weight and multiplying it by 0.45. And from here, I get a mass of about 51.75 kilograms for me. Or if you want to round that to the nearest tenth, that's about 51.8 kilograms. All right, so again, if you would like, go ahead and pause the video and do it for your own weight because that's kind of fun, okay? Um, and it should be in the same bulk as mine. You shouldn't be like 200 kilograms or anything uh, a lot bigger, or like two kilograms a lot smaller. So you should be in that probably 40 to 80 kind of a range, depending on what you weigh. All right, so that's converting from US uh, to metric and metric to US. We're doing conversion ratios just like when we did US conversions, okay? Next up is looking at temperature conversions. So there's two major temperatures of uh, units that we're going to look at, and that's Fahrenheit and Celsius. Uh, so I've got the equations set up both ways. Uh, you can use either one. Um, but here's your equations up top. The temperature in Fahrenheit equals 9 fifths times the temperature in Celsius plus 32. Or if you want to go the other direction, uh, the temperature in Celsius equals 5 ninths parentheses Fahrenheit minus 32. So remember, we're going to do order of operations. So you actually take your Fahrenheit temperature and subtract 32 first, and then take that answer and multiply by 5 ninths. When you're multiplying by one of these fractions, really you're multiplying by the numerator and dividing by the denominator. So this is multiplying by 5 and dividing by 9. Over here, this is multiplying by 9 and dividing by 5. Does that sound awesome? Great, let's do a few. So I just have some different types of weather here, and you may disagree with me. We could probably have a nice little discussion about types of weather and temperatures, um, but just doing some typical temperatures, and I'm gonna put them in Fahrenheit because I'm very familiar with Fahrenheit, as a lot of you guys probably are as well. 
And then we're going to convert those Fahrenheit temperatures to Celsius and see what those are like to have a nice table for ourselves. So uh, let's start with an oven temperature. So when I'm baking cookies or something at home, my oven temperature is about 350. Okay. Uh, if it's a heat advisory outside, I don't know, it's definitely over 100, so how about 110? Warm weather, if I'm wearing shorts and a t-shirt, it's probably like 85 outside. If it's a perfect day, I mean, not too hot, not too cold, just right, it's probably around 70 for me. Uh, if it's cool weather, if I start putting on a light jacket, it's probably like 60 outside with a light jacket. If it's cold weather and I have a heavy coat on, it's probably about 40, maybe even less than that. Um, and school's closed because it's so cold outside. Uh, I would say below zero, so let's go negative uh, 10. Okay, and let's convert all of those to Celsius. So what we're going to do is take our Fahrenheit temperature, subtract 32, and then I'm going to multiply by 5 ninths. So let me walk you through a couple of these, and then I'm going to let you guys try some. So I'm going to start with my 350. I'm doing 350 minus 32 first. Okay, and if I subtract 32, I'm going to get... That's what, 318? Am I going crazy? So if I subtract 30, that's 320. Yep, so 318. And then what you're going to do is multiply by 5 ninths. So you're taking that 318 that you got, and you're going to multiply by 5, and divide by 9. That's what it looks like in your calculator. Okay? When we do that, uh, I'm going to round all of these to the nearest tenth, just to um, be consistent, okay? So when I round that to the nearest tenth, I get about 176 point, and then it's 6 repeating, so that 6 is going to round up to about 0.7. Okay? Uh, let's do another one. So the heat advisory was at 110. So the first thing I'm going to do is do 110 minus 30. Okay? So 110 minus 30 is 80. So minus 32 is 78. Then I'm going to take that answer and multiply by 5 ninths. So 78 times 5 divided by 9. And I get 43.3 repeating, and that's going to round down to 0.3. Okay, are you guys starting to see what we're, what we're doing here? Okay, let's do one more and then I'll let you guys try some. The warm weather was at 85, so I'm going to do 85 minus 32 first, which would give me, what, 53? Then I'm going to take that 53, and I'm going to multiply it by 5 ninths, so that's 53 times 5 divided by 9. And when I do that, I get 29.4 repeating, so that 4 is going to round down. So that's going to be 0.4 degrees Celsius. All right, now that I've done a few, I'm going to let you guys try the next four. So here's four more. Okay, so see if you can convert 70 degrees Fahrenheit to Celsius, 60 degrees Fahrenheit to Celsius, 40 degrees Fahrenheit to Celsius, and negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit to Celsius. See how you do with those four? Go ahead and pause your video, and I'll give you an answer here in three, two, one. 70 degrees Fahrenheit should give you 21.1 degrees Celsius. 60 degrees Fahrenheit should give you 15.6 degrees Celsius. 40 degrees Fahrenheit should give you 4.4 degrees Celsius. And negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit should give you negative 23.3 degrees Celsius. How'd you do? Hopefully you're doing okay. Um, so anything below uh, 32 degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit for us, that's uh, when water starts freezing, will be negative for Celsius, if that helps you at all. So the negatives for Celsius just means it could snow outside. Okay? 
All right, so let's choose um, some Fahrenheit temperatures for different scenarios. So this is why I helped you guys with this table uh, to help you with these different scenarios and give a more practical approach to, uh, to Celsius, okay? So let's see. Choose the most reasonable Celsius temperature for each scenario. First off, a warm summer day. So our warm weather day was about 29.4. So which one of these do you think would be the most reasonable for a warm summer day? Let's see, five degrees is pretty close to my cold weather jacket. 15 degrees was my cool jacket, my light jacket. 25 is right between my perfect and my warm weather, so that would actually probably be a nice day in summer. 45 is above my heat advisory. so. Uh, I'm going to go with 25 degrees Celsius for being a nice warm summer day. Temperature inside of a freezer. All right. So I'm going to go with it's probably pretty cold. <laughs> uh, so let's see, but not ridiculously cold. Okay, because usually freezers are just below freezing. Because they have 100 degrees Celsius. I don't even have that on my like school's clothes. It's so cold. You know, and I don't think you want frostbite when you get your stuff out of the freezer. Uh, negative 10 degrees Celsius would be below freezing, um, but not ridiculously cold. So I'm going to go with that one. Uh, more than uh, 0 degrees Celsius, if it's positive, it wouldn't freeze anything. Okay, because it would be above the freezing point. Uh, let's see, an oven to bake cookies. So my oven temperature is 176.7, so the closest one down here is probably that 180. That would be about cookie baking temperature. All right. Last up is just, hey, let's convert some things. <laughs> so the first one uh, is going from Celsius to Fahrenheit. We had some practice going from Fahrenheit to Celsius, but let's go the other direction. So if you want to go from Celsius to Fahrenheit, we'll probably use the other uh, equation. F equals 9 fifths C plus 32 to go from Celsius to Fahrenheit. So I'm going to put 15 in there. Uh, so I'm going to do 9 fifths times 15. And then I'm going to add 32 to that answer. Okay. So when I do 9 fifths times 15, this one works out pretty nicely because 15 and 5 simplify um, to 3. But if they don't simplify nicely, what you can do in your calculator for this part is do 15 times 9 divided by 5, kind of like that. Okay, and in this case, like I said, it, it works out pretty nicely. Um, you're going to get 27 there when you do this part. And then you'll take that answer that you have and add 32 to it. So 27 plus 32 means that 15 degrees Celsius would equal 59 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, with that in mind, I'm going to let you guys try part B. Can you go from 45 degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit? Go ahead and pause your video and try that one, okay? And I'll show you the answer here in 3, 2, 1. You should get 113 degrees Fahrenheit as an answer. So what you should be doing is taking your 45 degrees Celsius and multiplying it by 9 fifths. So that's multiplying by 9 and dividing by 5. That part of it is going to give you 81. Then you'll take that 81 you got and add 32 to it. And that's where the 113 comes from. All right, last one. You guys should be good at this now. Uh, I'll let you try it, okay? See if you can convert 75 degrees Fahrenheit to Celsius. So pause your video and I'll show you the answer here in 3, 2, 1. You should be getting 23.8 repeating, so that's going to round up to 0 0.9 degrees Celsius. So what you should be doing is taking 75 and subtracting 32 first, which is going to give you 43. Then taking that answer and multiplying it by 5 and dividing by 9. Alright, have a great week, guys.